Welcome back to our Portuguese homestead. Today I want to show you something that's maybe a little bit unusual, but this fall season we have been focused on gathering acorns, what we Martin and Puk have, and we do this because they're edible and the oak trees are already here, so in that sense they can be a great resource for um, more calories for now and in the future. So this year I'm just kind of doing small batches of things and experimenting with recipes. Alleen zonder gaatje. So that's what I want to show you today. Als er gaatjes in zitten kunnen ze weg. Ja. Mooi. Dat is foto. Ja, dat staat op de film. Ja, we gaan hem zo aan de kippen geven. Nee! Jawel! Toen was hij weg. Ja. Ik zie wel die mooie slippers van me. Nothing ever goes to plan, of course. So I have been leaching these acorns for a few days now, changing the water once or twice a day. But they're, I've just tasted them and they're not ready yet. And you really need to get out... <laughs> okay, thank you, chicken. Uh, you really need to get out all the tannins. That's really important because it's not good for you. I don't want to just show you the rest of the flower making process. So I think what I'm going to do now 
It's just a, a version of what you can do that I've seen on one of the websites I've been reading. And that is to grind them first and then leach them some more. And that should go quicker because you have more surface area that water can leach the tenants from. So I'm going to blend them on up in our... I'll have this little machine. <laughs> So I'm going to blend them up in here and then put them in water again and then leach them some more. And then hopefully tomorrow um, they'll be in better condition and I can show you the flower making process. So I have this, uh, only this for size in my hand. Only this little machine. I can take half. Yeah, but a moment. to walk here because I don't have so much so many electricity spots so my little blender then This is obviously a lot finer <coughs> and that should leach a little quicker. It doesn't need much more, but it's definitely not finished today. So put some more water with it. And then we wait some more. Alright, next day I've rinsed them a couple more times um, and they taste much better now. So I'm just putting about half in the... <laughs> putting about half in the blender now. So and the goal was just to make it a little bit more fine, a little finer, because I already know that it's not going to be flower consistency now. Next up, drying. So the only thing I have to dry it is the oven. Uh, we don't have a dehydrator, that would take too much electricity I think. Maybe in the future we'll get there, I don't know. Um, but for now this is what we have, so we can do it on the lowest setting. And it worked okay the last time I did it. it took about an hour. And in the oven it was important to have the thing a little bit open so that all the moisture can escape. Just spreading it out as much as I can. So this would definitely be much easier to do in bigger batches. So if you have a dehydrator with a couple shelves, you can do much more at a time. If you have a bigger oven, you can do more. But I don't. So this is what we're doing now. It's on the very lowest that it can go. <laughs> Uh, yes, I need to clean my oven, I know, and then I put it as high as I possibly can. And then we wait. This has been off, uh, but this is the dried product. And I can just store it like this. 
and then make it finer if I want flour. And otherwise I can make a porridge from this or whatever I find a nice recipe for. So while this batch is drying in the oven, I wanted to show you a little recipe with some of the flour that I already made earlier. Already used some to test, but I wanted to show you, um, yeah, just a very simple, small recipe of something very delicious. So the easiest and probably most palatable for young ones is little pancakes. Um, so I have this a little bit left, I think, I'm guessing, oh, it's less than a cup, of less than half a cup, so probably a third. And I'm just adding one, or no, sorry, a half and a little bit, so that it, together it's a cup uh, of normal flour, so it's half and half. You could do more acorn, less acorn, but a little bit of flour is nice because that gives it, um, that's a better binding agent. Mixing it, and then I'm gonna add some cinnamon today, baking powder. Half a teaspoon, I think. An egg. And today I'm making them special with some raisins. Probably like half a cup. I don't know what's measuring. <laughs> Milk, starting with half a cup. So, and I don't want it to be too thin. So, I think together the milk was three quarters of a cup. I've heated some oil and butter in my skillet which I've been loving and then it's kind of just like a normal pancake Okay, this makes about six pancakes. <laughs> Are you ready, Bo? Approved? Yes. So they're good with some sugar on top. They still get quite fluffy, but that's mostly because you add white flour. But I love it. <laughs> Pick's busy.
good morning. <laughs> Both teething, so I'm tired. So uh, bear with me in this video. But I'm just in the garden now, having a look at uh, how everything is going. And I wanted to also talk to you a little bit about the basics of the garden for us in light of last week's video which i hope you enjoyed so the question that we get a lot is how much do we actually eat from the garden like can we put it into a percentage and so that's what i wanted to talk to you about it's hard to say in a percentage because we're just still learning and as we go and just trying different things what works here what works with our soil we're also just still building the soil um we don't do no dig <laughs> does that make sense grammatically no 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 dig for us because that would mean getting in a lot of topsoil from somewhere else since we live in the middle of nowhere that's not really a thing you can get here so one of the solutions i've seen from some people is just get those like 70 liter uh, bags from Agriloja and just get a lot of them but you need a lot of bags and that costs a lot of money there is no municipal composting service here so that's not something we can like call and get delivered and that's why we don't do no dig it w just doesn't make any sense for us so please don't leave me any comments about that no links to good videos i know that charles doubting exists i have seen his videos uh, it's very interesting but um yeah we're just working with what we have and what we can do here when it comes to percentage i think it's kind of hard to say because it's mostly just vegetables right now and now throughout the winter i've realized that we just didn't plant enough and it's totally my fault uh, i was just too tired and like over it kind of to really put in more than a week to work on the garden i did so quite a few things uh, not everything is growing super well uh, but that's again also my fault because uh, i haven't been watering enough and it's been a really dry winter and fall winter so far we just get a lot of rain in one go and then it's all over so it's january now it's planning season for a lot of people and we also plan a lot and we're kind of working on refiguring the garden in such a way that it works for us so last summer i kind of realized that i was trying to do too much too many vegetables and as we are still have a really basic setup i don't have a very big kitchen i don't like i only have a small stove uh, processing lots of food is maybe just not realistic for me right now and I of course hope to get there uh, once we have a house and like a bigger kitchen and more outdoor processing space but for now it's just not realistic to do a lot maybe I'll do some sun-dried tomatoes and that's it and so we because we are in the privileged position that we can grow year-round that's really my strategy going into the next seasons so we started for spring also more greens that we can eat through spring and the goal is then to only eat from the garden uh, when it comes to vegetables and maybe buy some onions and carrots because carrots in the soil I've already seen with the beets it's just not gonna work right now so can you put a percentage onto that I don't know we do eat a lot of vegetables um, but vegetables are not calories and so going into next summer uh, spring summer our focus is also going to be more on calories so that means maybe more sorghum um, more potatoes will give that another go and those are also quite easy to grow easy to process in larger batches and easy to store for us and i think that will give a much more of a boost to our caloric needs than more broccolis and more uh, spinach don't become a youtuber in portugal lighting is very hard here <laughs> anyhow so to wrap up what's growing in the garden right now lots of weeds um and some vegetables 
it's totally my fault that they're not bigger right now because I just haven't watered them enough and we've had some rain last week and they're really like everything's growing more again so that's my sign to water my vegetable garden more we are uh, having some turnips from the garden some greens some of the herbs that we uh, planted in the tire so some parsley some thyme that kind of stuff that's what we're having from the garden right now and then um i'm tra starting to plan what we're growing for the next seasons mm -hmm. 